Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Well, do you know, I was looking through the old computer files yet again. Nothing on TV worth watching. And I came across a little short vintage clip. thought, my God, 25, maybe longer, 30 years ago. And it was about fighting a fish. Over in the Pacific, on the Pacific Ocean. Now then, a lot of guys go out. And you know what? When you're boat fishing, you never really know what you're going to hook into. It could be a big common skate. It might be a big, long, six, seven foot conger eel. It could be a blue shark. It could be a poor beagle shark. It doesn't really matter what it is. Once you get to about 100 pounds of weight in any sort of fish, it gets physical. So you need to be in good shape for it. But more importantly, you need to know a few tips and techniques that might just help you, you know, get that fish to the boat. After all, you've invested a lot of time, money, effort, tackle, knots, everything into getting where you are hooked up to a good fish, the last thing you want to do is lose it. Now, the fish I'm going to show you was knocked on the head and eaten by the local villagers. But nevertheless, there might be a tip or two I can give you there on how to fight a big fish. You don't have to take it and put it in a frying pan. You can return it like I do now. I take them. But then, years ago, fish were eaten. In fact, they're still eaten now. I mean, let's face it, you go in a fish and chip shop and they're still eaten. Here's a few tips when I was over in the Pacific coast fishing in Mexico, well, I was after mako sharks, hooking up to three mako sharks a day, catching them in fact, and I thought, here we go, I'm hooked up to at least a 60, 70, 80 pound mako shark on the surface because we saw the fin coming for the bait. No, something else took it. But what was it? More important as an angler, how big was it? I was out on the Pacific coast from a place called Baja, where I used to go many times catching marlin. And of course, in amongst the marlin, if the marlin fishing was slow, I used to do a lot of shark fishing out there, but without the aid of Rubby W. We went out one day fishing for makos. In fact, catching I was, at one stage, I used to go out on my own catching up to three makos a day. And makos would be called sight casting, spotting the fin on the surface, and as you can see, I've hooked up to a fish that's nearly spooled the reel there, and I've got to absolutely get the line back on the reel as fast as you can. Now, if you do get a hookup and it peels all the line off the reel like this, and I had somewhere between 350 and 400 yards, I guess, out here, I was right down to the last bit of stub. The only thing you can do is try to move the boat towards the fish, towards the belly of line, and speed crank. Get that line right on the reel. Otherwise, if the fish runs again, and this was a big fish, I thought it was a mako shark, it could dump the whole spool, get to the bottom, and snap the line. Now you can see, after all that frantic winding and cranking, that my back is bent double. Now do not ever, if you can help it, under pressure of a rod, allow your back to get bent double. If you're fighting, even from a fighting chair, you know, you're locked up, you're on the harness, you could be an 80, you could be a 130 pound test, it doesn't matter. Once you're bent double and the rod's held down, please, you will do your back in. The fish will beat you. If you can, try and keep your back straight. It's a main tip I can give you. Obviously, when you're trying to gain line like I was just then, all you do then is you just bend over and you ask what we call speed crank and you've got to get that line back on the reel. Otherwise, you're gonna get spooled. So, back to the battle. Remember, try and keep your back straight. Even though I've got to drop down low to get that line and that reel turning fast, I'm trying to get as many revolutions on the reel handle as I can to get that line, get it storage. All you've got to think of in your mind is that you are a storage device. You have to just do the drag up and as maximum pressure as you can. Don't bother pulling on the rod, just speed crank it on. Crank, 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 it's non-stop. Get yourself into the mental state and treat it almost as a workout. That's the only way you can do it. it. Gives you that safety factor that if a big fish takes off again, you do at least have a line left on the reel to give it to it. Right, thank goodness. I've got about 350 odd yards of line back on that reel. I'm back in action. I'm starting to get pressure on the fish. And then, only then, can I relax from that bent over speed cranking? Can I relax? And I'm gonna be like this, hopefully with your back straight, and you can keep that arm working, pulling on the foregrip, the rod up, 
wind on the down stroke, don't just hold the rod and try and graunch it on because that's going to wear you out big time. The fish again will win. With the big fish, you need to pull up and you wind down the line. Try and get it in your head that you are actually doing one or two turns of the reel and winding that rod top down into the water. Get to the bottom, hold it, relax, take the strain on your forearm and then pull back till you get it right high. Watch the tip raise, watch it just open up like this and as it opens up, drop again for another pump. That's the way you get the big fish. Do you know what? I'm still fighting it. Once you get to the stage of coming up tight on the fish, that's when you want to start straightening your back and trying to keep the rod as high as you can because you want the fish fighting the pressure of the rod blank. You don't want it fighting your back. Get tight on the fish. So gradually, I'm tightening up more and more on the fish. But listen guys, that's no ordinary fishing rod. I'm not selling them, I just bought them. A Calstar 5 foot 6 stand-up stick. Now, for those who might not know, it's not like the British rods. A stand-up stick was really born out in San Diego area where the long distance tuna fishermen were going out way down the Mexican coast and hooking in to big ass fish. I mean, two, three hundred pound tunas. Very, very big, very strong fish and not catching them. So maybe 30, 40 years ago, they designed these short tuna sticks and they have a long foregrip on them. So instead of holding the rod on the reel just here and getting pulled over, you can put your hand further up the rod blank like this and really exert some pressure, giving you some slack to allow for that downward crank to get some line on the reel. If you don't get line on the reel, the fish is winning all the time. But you've got to get the balance right. You want the rod top to do the work for you. As it comes up, just hold it and just watch that bend go down for another crank. And I'll tell you what, a stand-up stick just much like those cow stars, I don't even know if they make them anymore. Brilliant, I should have bought six foot, it's not five foot six to get around the outboard, that's by the by. Brilliant rods, I still got them. I've had fished a 500 pounds on them several times. Brilliant fish, back to the battle. Now I've got the fish under some sort of semblance of pressure and that means I can start to work on it really hard. And you can see here that it's really the top one third of that cow star stand-up stick that is actually bending. Now you can see the stickiness of the drag as well there. You see the rod jerk back. That's because that small star drag is getting thrashed to pieces by a very big shark that's powering off and it just does not give line smoothly and I'm basically getting beaten to death with it. So if you can invest in a nice lever drag reel, it makes life so much easier. And there is the bend in a stand-up stick. Now then, I was using the skipper's tackle there. It is a star drag reel. It has a star on the edge of the reel that you do up. But the downside of those, and they're very good for catching fish, they're caught loads and loads of world records, but little, little drag washers inside, a very small area of a drag washer, not much bigger than this. Whereas these ones, this one in particular is a, is a what they call a lever drag there. You can see it's got a lever drag. This is a Triton 50, 50 wide in fact, it's extra wide spool, takes another 200 yards of line over a stand of 50. Lots and lots of marlin on this one, and sharks. But the lever drag has a much wider drag plate, just to give you an idea, a much bigger surface area, so it gives you a smoother fight. So if you're going for big fish, although I've caught big fish on star drags, they are not really the most pleasant to use because when you lose line, you lose it. Zzz, zzz, zzz fits and starts most of the time, the larger lever drag will be much, much smoother. We gotta go for the uh, thigh pad if you can. Now then, the use of a thigh pad is literally what it says. It goes, not a butt pad, that goes over what we call it your belly pad area where you'd normally put the rod butt to take the pressure. A thigh pad way lower down. And my system is attached to what's called a kidney belt. Uh, at this stage I haven't got the actual kidney harness clipped to the reel. I have had it during the battle, but now I'm getting close to the fish. I want to make sure that I can move around the outboard a lot freer. And if I was clipped up to the kidney harness, I might not be able to pass the rod tip around the back of the outboard. But I'm still using the thigh pad and I can get a lot more pressure holding that rod higher up on the foregrip than I can if I had a shorter foregrip rod. There, now you can see the start to spring that bend into the rod and crank and wind. You only wind on the downward stroke. 
what you're doing is basically storing line. But remember, I thought this one was a 60, 70, 80 pound Mako shark, but you can tell by the look on my face, I realize it's something much larger. So you can see there, with the use of a thigh pad with the rub butt lower down, a kidney harness which comes around the back of your kidneys to give you upper body support, and the fact that you're fighting standing up and when you want to pressure the rod, you actually bend your knees towards the fish, put a flex in the rod, and then you go down, straightening your legs. That gives you the downward momentum. One, two turns on the reel, bend your rods, push your hips at it, bang, you're gonna load the rod again. And tell you what, not a small shark, this one. There I was, out thinking it was a 60, 70, 80 pound Mako shark, and it turned into something much larger. Big mother of a hammer. Serious hammer, if you'll pardon the French. I don't know what we're doing with this in a panga. But it's major. <laughs> 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 it was a maker. Am I? Finally, I do a lot of small boat fishing, and here I am. Yes, I've got my rod bent over the rod. In fact, I've got my back bent. All the things I said don't say do, but you've got to be aware right at the last minute of a fight, guys, that shark could go under the boat, cut the line on the prop, the keel, anything. So you've got to be prepared to unclip yourself, get yourself sorted out, and make sure that line doesn't touch the bottom of the boat. And this fish was taken in by the skipper, he wanted it for the village. A hammerhead shark, we had no gaff or anything. Just look, the boat is about to get tipped over. Some of the stupid things we do as anglers, look at the boat's angle, it's absolutely cranked over. And this is a nice big hammerhead shark. This one is gonna feed a lot of people. And the fish just took, it took one of these small mackerel, just a single mackerel. So it, it tells you what their sense of smell is like because I thought the fish had gone and Ramon said it's still there. And it was going like crazy to catch to this mackerel. Well, there you go. That should give you a few tips on how to fight a big fish. And of course you need the luck to hook it in the first place, but you want to catch it after all that investment in time and effort and everything. So just remember, try to keep your back straight. Try to use your forearms. Only wind on the downward stroke. Don't try and grunch and grind it on. It does the reel no good for the gears in there. It certainly does your arms no good. And don't keep bent over like this and all the time if you can help it. Try to lose a bit of line if you have to, just to get your back. You'll find it so much easier. And of course, don't be a wuss and say, oh, I'm not gonna be using harness. Use a harness, use a shoulder harness, use a kidney harness, use a bucket harness, use a thigh pad, use whatever you can to put the odds in your favour. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We'll see you next time.